briefing. The ship, when it lands, the ship is it's not moored to anything, all right? So the ship's going to move around a little bit. So we just want you to be aware of that. We're going to walk up towards the front of the car. I need you to stay up. I'll let each and every one of you know when you come the ship. Hop on, put your seatbelt on, you can take it off the chair. Or you can go self with you, see many kind of calls or text messages. Feel free to take as many photos as you want, actually. Could you um, sort of walk me through every uh, piloting operation that you're doing right now? Like, show me what you're doing and talk me through what you're doing and why with your left hand there. All right, so the, the side stick right now, we're in flight mode. So the side stick is just controlling our outside aerodynamic uh, surfaces, which you can see on the screen right here. So as we ride along thermals here and we make turns and little climbs and descents and things like that, we ride along the airwaves. I'm just making small corrections with the side stick, just like we, you would in an airplane, basically. So in flight mode, it, it's relatively similar to flying an airplane, only uh, only response more like a boat. When we put it in takeoff and landing mode, which would mean that we take our aft swivel here, we put it down to 90 degrees, and then we can start using our forward swivels to kind of hang it up like a helicopter then. And when you do that, all the pitch and power for your aft engine also transfers to your side stick. So now your what used to be your push or thrust propeller is vectored down and pointed straight towards the ground. So when you push and pull on the stick, it changes the power to that rotor and it picks the nose up and down. So it's effectively an elevator. We also have a second propeller that the aft engine runs. It's a fixed lateral propeller. It's kind of like a tail rotor on a helicopter. So when you push the stick left and right, it changes pitch and power on that one and it moves our nose left and right, just like what a tail rotor on a helicopter would. So the aerodynamic surfaces always work, but when we're in takeoff and landing mode, that additional thrust vector control allows us the maneuverability with this larger airship that we never had on the previous model. Yeah. How's the weather today? The weather is great today. It's pretty cool.
pretty good visibility in all directions. And other than being a little bit hot, the winds are relatively light. It's a great day to fly at Oshkosh, that's for sure. How fast are we going? Right now we're doing about 23 knots. There's very little wind up here, maybe uh, five knots or so. So we're plus or minus uh, five knots of that 20 to 25 that we've been doing on the air. So the nose that we're looking at right up there of the Zeppelin, what is that constructed of? Well, what you see here is the envelope portion of it. So the envelope is a uh, uh, Tedlar coated polyester fabric with a polyurethane uh, bonding agent, basically. And then we have it painted, so everything that you see that's yellow and blue is a specially developed paint. It's also a helium retardant paint. The Tedlar is also a helium barrier for us, and it's a UV barrier for protection from the outside elements. The actual internal structure is, we, consists of three nose-to-tail lanterons, we call them, so they're welded aluminum uh, girder structures that go from nose-to-tail, and they basically are in the upper half of the envelope. Right across the top is one, and then there's two others that run right about mid-ship from the nose through where the side engines are connected, right through where the aft uh, fins are connected and then up to the rear engine. So it relies on pressure still to maintain a nice round aerodynamic shape, but it gives us with that internal framework hard attachment points for the gondola, the fins, it allows us to get the engines up out of the way, keeps all of our all of our uh, control surfaces connected to something solid. So it's not pressure sensitive for controllability anymore like the pressure ships are, like the blimps are, uh, but this airship also does rely on the pressure to maintain a good aerodynamic uh, shape to it. But Goodyear still wants to call it a blimp even though it's a semi-rigid dirigible. What do you tell those those nitpickers? Well, I always say that internally we call it an airship anyway, and an airship's an airship, so that's a pretty common term. But yeah, I, I think it's recognizable as an icon as a Goodyear blimp, and that's never going to change. So, you know what, we're not sticklers for Zeppelin versus airship versus the ritual or whatever else really we, we call it the blimp or the airship and we'll take whatever comes our way thank you michael doherty i appreciate it pilot of the goodyear zeppelin airship wingfoot one appreciate your time thank you make sure you're strapped in kind of the other ones we're going to be good friends <laughs>